morning. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. It's wonderful to be worshiping our God with all of you here. If you're worshiping with us online, please just send an email or text to Pastor Boss. Let him know that you were watching and worshiping with us as well. Our service and worship theme today is we see how focused worship seeks service from our God more than service to our God. And we'll see that brought out in the readings and the hymns. We'll, we'll see that it's only from being served by our God that we're then able to serve Him in all that we do. Our opening hymn is Blessed Jesus at Your Word. God bless our worship together.
well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
1. We read, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epiphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all the power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Cleaning rooms show love to God. The second one. 
it was upside down for a second. Sharing toys with family or, or friends? Yeah. Potential love? Absolutely. Yeah. Again, maybe we don't always want to, but, but we do because we're showing love too. Yeah. Yeah, so they might not have toys, so if we share with them, then they have toys too. And we realize that our, our toys come from God. He's the one who gives them to us, so they really is. So we can share them with others. Absolutely. Well, this last one, this one's really hard. You've been knocking them out of the park so far. Listening to God's word. Yeah, yeah that, it wasn't that hard, was it? <laughs> so all of, these, all of these are showing love to God, right, when we do them? How about this? How would you order these if, if we had to put them in a list from like least important to most important? How would, how would you put that? What would you put as the least important? This is an opinion question. So. Listening to God's word is least? Well, we actually want to put that one first, right? It sounds a little bit hard for us to hear, right? Because these are both good things, right? When we clean our rooms, we're showing love to God and our parents. When we're sharing toys, we're showing love to God and our parents. But sometimes we put our priorities out of place, don't we? Like, we don't always put listening to God's word first. We actually heard that in our gospel reading, which I read just a couple minutes ago. So in our gospel, there was a woman named Martha, and she opened her home to Jesus. She said, come on in. Uh, you've been traveling on the road, and, and you can have a place to stay tonight. So she was making a meal for Jesus. And is that a good thing? She wanted to do that. She was making him supper, kind of like your parents make you supper sometimes, okay. or hopefully all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good thing that they were doing, that she was showing love to God in that way. But she kind of lost sight of what was more important, like listening to Jesus speak his word to her. Um, she put her priorities out of place. She thought that making a meal for him was more important than listening to God's word. But Jesus wanted her to see like it was so much more important for her to listen to his word. And God wants us to know how important it is for us to listen to his word as well. When we read the Bible or hear about it in church or Sunday school, who are we hearing about? Jesus. Absolutely. We're hearing about Jesus. So we're hearing about how much he loves us. We know how much he loves us because he lived here on earth. He lived a perfect life and then he died on the cross to take away what? Our sins. Our sins. Absolutely. And, and that's what we hear in God's word. And God wants us to know that. How much he loves us and what he's done for us. Because he took away our sins, where do we get to go? Heaven. Heaven. Absolutely. You're knocking it out of the park, man. So after we listen to God's word. After we put that as the first thing that we need to do no matter what, then everything else kind of falls into place. Then we see after spending time in God's Word and knowing how much He loves us, and we can see like we can share our toys with our friends because we know that they come from God and it's how we can show love. We can clean our rooms when our parents tell us to because we love them and we love God. And it puts everything in its proper place. So let's review. Is it good to clean our rooms? Absolutely. Is it good to share toys with friends or family? Absolutely. Is it good to listen to God's word? Absolutely. And which one is most important? Which one does God say, I want you to listen to this first, above all else? No. Not that one. <laughs> but that one is important. I want you to keep cleaning your room. That's a good thing. But, but which one? Listening to God's word, absolutely right. So that's how we're then able to show our love to God. Listen to his word first. Let's, let's pray about that. So dear Jesus, help us to always put listening to God's word first. As we listen to your word, remind us of how much you love us and what you've done to save us from our sins. Help us to show our love for you in everything we do. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. You can go back to your seats. We'll continue with the singing of our next hymn, our, our hymn of the day. Um, One thing's needful, I believe it is. And this hymn is maybe not as familiar to us. Like, it was in the old red hymnal. Um, I don't think we've sung it too much as a congregation here. So if it doesn't sound familiar, if you're not comfortable joining in singing right away, uh, it's okay to just sit and listen and then join in when you're comfortable.
text for our consideration this morning comes from our God. We'll begin with prayer. Lord, open now our hearts to hear, and through your word to us draw near. Amen. She wanted it to be perfect. She saw how hard he'd been working. She could see he was tired. He'd been traveling from town to town with no place to call his own, no place to lay his head at night. She saw how his enemies were constantly trying to trap him in his words and teachings. And there wasn't a moment for him to just rest until now because he was in her home for the night and this was her chance to show her love for the Savior. And she wanted to do the best that she could. She wanted it to be perfect for him. She wanted everything to be just right. He deserved no less than that. And this is her chance to show her thankfulness for him, for all that he's done for her. And so she just pours her heart into the preparations. She gives it her all. But it's too much. Maybe she realized that before she started. Maybe she only realized it after everything was already started. Whatever the case, it was too much. There was too much for her to handle, too many different moving parts for her to do all on her own. And anxiety and stress began worming their way into her heart, eating away at her peace of mind. But that didn't matter because it was for him. This was how she could show her love for her Lord. This is how she can serve her God, so she presses forward. She continues serving, even if it's killing her. She wanted it to be perfect. It wasn't. And as she looks over, what does she see but her sister, sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to him speak. Didn't her sister see? Didn't her sister know how she was struggling to hold it all together? All of her preparations, all of her hard work, all of the service to God that she had just poured her heart into, it, it was all one moment away from falling apart. Didn't her sister care? Didn't the Lord? He's God. He knows all things. Surely he knew how she was barely holding it together, how overwhelmed she was as she was trying to do all of these things to serve him. He knew that she was doing it because she loved him. He knew that. And yet he did nothing to take away the anxiety and stress that were overwhelming her. Why not? Didn't the Lord care about her? Finally, at her breaking point, she asked him as much, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Maybe she knew what she was implying. That the Lord knew how stressed and overwhelmed she was and yet did nothing to stop it. That must mean he didn't care about her. Maybe as soon as the words were out of her mouth, she realized what she had said. But maybe she was so distressed, so overwhelmed, so distracted by all the things she thought needed to be done that she couldn't see it. Whatever the case, Jesus' next words just cut through all of the anxiety, all of the stress. Martha, Martha. Those words were like a hand on her shoulder, gently shaking her while she slept to get her to wake up to get her to open her eyes and see the truth. Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Only one thing is needed. Jesus knew. He knew how overwhelmed and stressed she was as she sought to serve him in everything that she was doing. He knew that. He saw it. And he cared about her so much. That's why he needed her to know. Her heart was in the right place. She wanted to serve her God, and that was a good thing. But in doing so, she was losing sight of what was most important. God's Word. Sitting at her Savior's feet and doing nothing but listen. Listen to God's Word to be served by Him. 
being served by him was the only way that she'd be able to serve him. And Jesus needed her to see that. He needed her to know that's the only way she can serve him, not just in preparing a meal for him, but with her whole life, her whole heart. It was the only way that she'd be able to weather the storms of life, the trials and challenges that would threaten to overwhelm her with anxiety and stress and worry. That was the only way, by holding on to the one thing she absolutely needed, above all else, her God, and what he promised her in his word. Jesus needed her to see that. What keeps us from seeing the one thing needed? Distractions, right? And sometimes these distractions are hard for us to address because they're distractions that come from serving our God, the things that we do out of love for Him. And that makes it harder for us to see them because service is good. That's what our God wants from His children. He wants us to show our love for Him in all that we think, say, and do. So the question is, when does something good become something bad? Well, Jesus wasn't faulting Martha for wanting to serve Him. He knew she was doing it out of love for Him. But her priorities weren't in the right place. She sought to serve her Lord before being served by Him. She lost sight of the one thing that was most important. And if asked the question, if she was sat down and asked, Martha, which do you think is more important, making a meal for Jesus or sitting at his feet and listening to the promises God makes in his word, what do you think she would say? Perhaps an easier question for us to answer is, what would we say? Which is more important, the things that we do for God or what God does for us? It's no question, right? And yet time and time again, we forget that. We, we fall into the clever trap of focusing solely on all the things that need to be done, good things, things that we want to do out of love and thankfulness to God for all that he's done for us. Things like if your parents, being good parents, spending time with your children, showing them that you love them, that you care for them, that they're a priority to you. Things like being a good friend, if you have them, recognizing that, that God has blessed you with them and, and you want them to know they're important to you. You care about them, you're thankful that they're in your lives. Being good employees, picking up a few extra shifts at work to have extra money to provide for your families, or be good stewards of the time and talents that God has given you. These are all good things. It's how we show love to God. But they're not good things when they distract us from the Word. When they keep us from seeing what's most important. Time spent in God's Word, sitting at our Savior's feet and listening. Oh, but these are good things that we're doing, we tell ourselves. These are the ways that we can serve our God and show our love for Him. But we quickly realize it's too much. There's too much for us to handle all on our own. Without the proper perspective and foundation for our service, we crumble and fall. We easily become overwhelmed with the concerns and anxieties and worries of many things. And, and we find ourselves asking questions similar to Martha's. Lord, don't you care about me? Don't you see how concerned and stressed I am right now? I, I, I'm in the middle of it. I, I'm doing all of these things for you, Lord. I'm, I'm trying to do them to show my love for you. Can't you see that? Can't you see how concerned and overwhelmed I am? And yet you do nothing to stop that, to change that. Don't just stand there doing nothing. Help me. Our God responds to us in the same way that he responded to a woman who is distressed and overwhelmed, concerned and anxious about many things. Martha. Martha. Alex. Alex. He calls us in his word, the word in which we hear about our God and what he's done for us. We hear about the, what we need to know above all else. In his word, our God turns our attention back to where it needs to be on the one thing we need, him. 
Lord, don't you care? Our God cares about us so much. And he loves us so much, more than we can even begin to understand. And yet in his word, he gives us a glimpse of that love, what that love looked like. In his word, God tells us how he stepped into this sin-broken world with one goal in mind. Living a perfect life and dying a horrible, shameful death on a cross, suffering hell itself for us. And he did. He went to his death willingly because he knew that is what it would take to rescue us. And by his perfect, precious blood, God forgave all of our sins. They've been washed away. They are gone as far as the east is from the west. They're not coming back. We have a home in heaven waiting for us because of him. That is how much our God loves us. That is how much he cares for us. That is what our God has done for us. And hearing what our God has done for us, that's a must. We make time spent in God's word our top priority, not just on Sunday morning, but every day. It's the five-minute devotion that we have at the kitchen table or in the car on the way to work or school. It's praying with our families at the end of the day, laying the joys and sorrows of the day at our Savior's feet and doing nothing but listening, sitting at our Savior's feet and listening to the promises that He makes in His Word. All of that puts our priorities in the right place because we know being served by our God is the only way that we're able to serve Him. It's the only way that we get through the good times and the bad times in life. It's the only way that we can share God and His love with others in our lives. It's the only way. The only way is being served by our God, sitting at His feet and listening before going out and serving. And if we forget that, if we lose sight of that, it's all too easy for us to be overwhelmed with all the concerns and worries about many different things. It's all too easy for us to forget that and we crumble and fall. And when that happens, and it does, our God is calling to us in His Word. He's saying, I see you. I know. I'm concerned. I, I care about you so much. I see how stressed you are right now. Don't look at those things. Look at what I've done for you. Look at the promises that I've made you in my word. Focus on that. I love you. I forgive you. You are my child. You have a home in heaven waiting for you. What more? What else do you need to know? You are mine. Hold on to that. We left Martha in uncertainty. Luke's gospel, if you look, it doesn't tell us how she responded to Jesus. Flash forward several months later. We don't encounter a woman who is overwhelmed with preparing a meal, concerned and anxious about many different things. Instead, we find a woman who has a staggering, astounding faith and confidence in her Lord, even in times that are far more stressful, far more overwhelming than entertaining dinner guests. You see, her brother has just died. Her brother just died, and, and the tears running down her face, they haven't dried yet. The pain and anguish are still raw and throbbing. And, and she's grieving. She's in pain. She is hurting. But she's still standing. And we ask, how? How has this woman not fallen apart? How, how is this the same woman that we met in our gospel this morning? She's been changed by her Savior's words. By listening to him, and, and we hear the beautiful confession of faith that she gives to Jesus as she goes out to meet him on the road. Can you see it? Can you see her stop in front of him? Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. She doesn't ask him, why did you wait? Why didn't you come immediately when we sent word to you that he was sick? Don't you care about us? Don't. Didn't you care about him? Instead, she says, but I know. I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. 
your brother will rise again. And Jesus tells her, I know. I know my brother will rise again on the last day of the resurrection, Martha says. And she knows that. She's holding on to the promise that God has made in his word. She'll see her brother again. And death is not the end. What Jesus says next, that is the one thing she absolutely needs to hear. The one thing we absolutely need to hear. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come into the world. <clears throat> Martha gets it. And that knowledge has changed everything for her. She's holding on to the one thing she needs, her God. And the promises that he's made in his word. That's how she's able to stand. That's how she's able to serve him with her whole heart in life here on this earth. Because she knows he's done all things for her. And that's my prayer for you and me as well, for all of us. This is the last time I, I get to stand in front of you and, and preach. And I don't know when the next time I'll see some of you again, but, but I know the next time I want to, it's in heaven. It's with our Father in heaven when we're home. And, and so let's make time spent in God's Word our top priority, sitting at our Savior's feet and listening, holding on to the one thing we absolutely need above all else, no matter what happens in this life, no matter what we go through, hold on to that. The one thing needed, our God and what he's done for us. Only then can we serve him with our whole hearts. Only then can we tell others about the one thing they need as well. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, Guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll join in the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it on page 10 of your service folders as we confess our Christian faith together. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From the there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. You'll find it read responsibly on pages 11 and 12 of your service folders. We pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Let your word in our hearts and cause it to produce fruit of our lives. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of your truth throughout our world. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and all our godly walks of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them the wisdom that they may follow justice and your people. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who devote themselves to the people's tasks. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them love and take them into your 
our daily care. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
Holy Scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your Holy Word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn on what has now been sown.
we still planning a trip, or we still will take a trip to the Creation Museum on Wednesday the 3rd. You're all invited to join us. There's a sign-up sheet on the Narthex Bulletin Board. And if you have a question, please speak to Steve Watcher, and he is the one organizing this. Uh, today, we are invited to rejoice with Marv and Mona Israel. It was about a year ago that Marv asked Mona an important question, and Mona said yes, and the rest is history. So congratulations to them again, and uh, rejoice with them. Then one final thing, as Vicar mentioned in his sermon, this is his final Sunday with us. Uh, he'll be at Beautiful Savior for a few more weeks yet before he and his wife Rachel will depart and go back to Mechlon for Vicar's final year uh, of training at the seminary. Vicar, we wish you all of God's blessings. As you continue, it's been a pleasure and a joy for you, uh, for us to be here with you uh, once a month. Uh, Rachel, as well, thank you for your service to our congregation. Uh, we wish you all the best as you continue in your service to your Savior, Jesus Christ. Those are the announcements. Uh, there are refreshments. Maybe give an opportunity to, to bid for a well the vicar. Mark. On a table back in the fellowship, oh, yeah. our, our number of umbrellas that I've accumulated <laughs> over the years. And uh, I thought today would be a good one. <laughs> so if you don't want to be a big drip. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Mark. Yeah, so, so back at the table, Mark was employed with Enterprise and collecting these things and he wants to give them to me. So there you go. Thank you. Bigger. <laughs>